Today, I'm going to explain an American-Australian science fiction thriller film called 222. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie starts as a man walks through the Grand Central Station New York, with a gun in his hand. People around him notice the gun and start running away. He walks to another man who seems to be protecting a girl. Both the men point guns at each other when the security stops them. The camera pans to a clock, which shows that the time is exactly 2.22. Then, we can hear gunshots. Turns out it was just a dream. A man named Dylan wakes up from his dream, and progresses with his routine, listening to the news. The news talks about a star called Hamlin that died out 30 years ago, but its light is reaching the Earth 30 years later, and that this supernova will have effects on the Earth and its inhabitants. Dylan is then shown on his way to work, riding a bike and heading to the Grand Central Station to take the train. He works as an air traffic controller with serious talent in visualizing patterns. After work, he goes to a club, drinking with his co-workers, and receives a ticket to an aerial ballet as a gift for his upcoming birthday. The following day, at work, he starts to see constellation patterns in front of him. He starts to hallucinate about his recurring dream and cannot communicate with airplanes. He looks at the clock to see it is exactly 2.22. Looking closely, he realizes that the clock has stopped. Dylan comes back to his senses only when his colleagues call him. Dylan notices that the planes are about to crash into each other due to his pause. He quickly reports to the pilots and saves them from crashing by an inch. The passengers inside the planes are relieved. Dylan notices that the clock has started working again. Due to this incident, he is suspended for four weeks. The day after he was suspended, he attends the aerial ballet, where he sees a woman named Sarah, and is stunned by her beauty. After the ballet is over, everyone is at the after party. Dylan approaches Sarah and introduces himself. They go to a restaurant and start talking. Dylan tells Sarah that his father was a pilot and that he also trained to be a pilot but could never become one, as he was afraid of flying. Sarah tells him that she works at the Howard Pace Art Gallery. He also tells her about being suspended from work, and he finds out that Sarah was on the plane that almost collided with the other aircraft at 2.22 p.m. Dylan felt apologetic about the incident, but Sarah was instead thankful towards Dylan for saving her life. As they depart, they admit to each other that for a first date, they felt a deep connection and it felt like they had known each other forever. The following day, while on the way to the Grand Central, Dylan notices the same happenings as the day before, siren, a woman laugh, construction sounds, a man saying may I help you, and glass breaking. As he arrives at the Grand Central Station, at 2.21 p.m., he sees a businessman reading his newspaper, a couple hugging each other, a line of preschoolers where the last child in line drops something, and a pregnant woman under the clock. At exactly 2.22 p.m., the window of the station shatters. He then goes to meet Sarah and asks her out to an early dinner. He goes to Central Park with her for ice cream. Sarah reveals that she had stopped dancing because of an injury. Dylan feels bad, so to cheer her up, he plays a song and starts dancing in front of her. She joins him and the two happily dance together in the middle of a busy park. In the end, they kiss. They go to Dylan's apartment and make love. The next morning, they lie on the bed and cuddle. Dylan asks Sarah where she got her necklace from, to which Sarah replies that it was from her ex-boyfriend, Jonas, who happens to be the main artist of the gallery at which she works. Dylan asks when is Sarah's birthday and they find out that both of them were born on the same day, April 18, 1986, and they are both turning 30 within a week's time. Dylan suddenly hears a car crash on the road below his apartment at exactly 9.15 am, and he tells Sarah that it is the third day in a row that the same incident had happened. Dylan then takes a cab. Going to Grand Central. As the driver takes the shorter route, Dylan tells him to stop the cab and notices again the same pattern of siren, a woman laugh, construction sounds, and a man saying may I help you. Dylan then shouts for the cab to stop, and this infuriates the cab driver, who turns around to tell Dylan off, for shouting at him. Just then, another car hits them both, causing the breaking of the cab's glass windows. Even though Dylan is injured, he goes to the Grand Central Station and sees the exact same pattern of events. A businessman stands with a newspaper, an older couple hugs, a group of kids walks in a line when the last kid drops something, and lastly, a pregnant woman stands under the clock. He tells Sarah of these repeating patterns, but with different people carrying out the same actions. Sarah does not believe Dylan, but helps to clean his wounds from the car accident. Dylan goes home and starts writing all the events of his day, starting from 9.10 am. First, he writes about the drop of water, then a bug dying, and a plane flying overhead. 
The following day, Dylan goes to the top of his apartment building to see if the pattern repeats itself. He waits for the drop of water like yesterday, but the sky is clear. However, exactly at 9, 10 again, a drop falls onto his notebook. Surprised, he closes the notebook and when he opens it, there is a squashed bug on the page. Then an airplane flies over him. The pattern has repeated itself, Dylan almost cannot believe it. Dylan goes to the gallery looking for Sarah, and realizes that the gallery was having an exhibition with Jonas art piece as the main exhibition. Jonas is Sarah's ex-boyfriend, he has created a light hologram exhibition about the Grand Central Station, and Dylan sees that it is exactly like the events that he has experienced in the past few days. A businessman reading his newspaper, a couple embracing each other, a line of preschoolers, and a pregnant woman under the clocks. Dylan assumes that Jonas is stalking him, as only Dylan knows about these events. He attacks Jonas, resulting in a brawl, he questions Jonas on whether he was stalking him. In the audience, is the owner of the Kiefer Gallery, he applauds saying it was a great idea to enact the murder at the Grand Central Station that happened 30 years ago. Sarah apologizes to Jonas about Dylan's attack, and puts her relationship with Dylan on hold. Later that day, Dylan texts Sarah to beg for her forgiveness. In the meantime, he finds a stack of envelopes hidden in his home. He finds out a man named Jake Redman had written these letters to a woman named Evelyn. Upon investigation, Dylan finds out that Jake Redman lived in his apartment 30 years ago, back in 1987. He also finds an article online and finds out about the murder that happened 30 years ago in Grand Central. Jake Redman was the murderer, he killed his lover, Evelyn, and a police officer in the middle of the Grand Central. Evelyn was even pregnant at that time. The murder occurred exactly at 2.22. Jake killed Evelyn out of jealousy because Evelyn was in love with the police officer, Noah Marks, whom Jake killed that day too. He also finds that Jake, Evelyn, him, and Sarah share the same birthday. In fact, he and Sarah were born on the day Jake and Evelyn died. Dylan connects the dots, and figures out that he and Sarah are Jake and Evelyn in another life. Then he finds Evelyn's address in the letters, and visits her home. Dylan meets Evelyn's sister who tells him that Evelyn loved Jake a lot, so she thinks the theory that Jake killed Evelyn because she loved someone else is false. She also informs him that Noah, the police officer, was in love with Evelyn too. When Dylan gets back home, he links the constellation that is taking place after 30 years in their situation. He sees that the three stars involved in the constellation are actually Jake, Evelyn, and Noah. Currently, it is Dylan, Sarah, and Jonas. Since the constellation has returned, their fate has returned too. He texts Sarah about what he has been seeing, and asks her to meet him. Sarah is in the gallery looking at Jonas's holograms. She tells Jonas about Dylan's findings, but Jonas dismisses it as Dylan's delusions. Later that day, Dylan is in his apartment when Sarah visits him. She sees him distressed and tries to console him. Dylan tells her that since the following day is their birthday, there is a chance he can kill her. Like Jake killed Evelyn. So, he tells her to go away and never meet him again for their own good. After Sarah leaves, Dylan loses control and starts breaking things around his apartment. He then goes to the terrace with the intention of jumping off the building, but he changes his mind. Sarah, on the other hand, goes to Jonas's office and tells him everything that happened. Jonas offers to take her on vacation to get her mind off Dylan. The following morning, Dylan realizes that the water drop, the bug, the plane, and everything that happens in the pattern, happened to Jake the day he died. The pattern has been trying to inform Dylan that Sarah is in danger. After figuring this out, Dylan runs to save her. He calls her several times on the way but she doesn't pick up. So, he goes to Jonas's office. There, he is shocked to see a wall filled with Sarah's pictures and several holograms of her. He realizes that Jonas is obsessed with Sarah. He also finds an empty case of a gun and is now sure that Sarah is in danger. He rushes to the station to find her. Meanwhile, Jonas and Sarah are in the Grand Central Station buying the tickets for their journey. Jonas tells Sarah to wait for him under the clock. History is repeating itself. Jonas returns to her with the tickets. He too realizes that they are living their past. Sarah tells him that she cannot go with him because she is in love with Dylan. Agitated, he asks Sarah to tell him that she loves him, but Sarah refuses just as Dylan arrives at the station. Jonas, thinking that Sarah called him there, gets enraged and makes his way towards Dylan with a gun. Sarah begins to see the same characters that Dylan had described. The businessman, the couple who hugs, the children, and so on. She comes to realize that everything that Dylan said was true. But that also means the pregnant woman under the clock is Sarah herself. Jonas first points his gun towards Dylan, and then he points to Sarah, saying that if he couldn't have her, neither could Dylan. 
Dylan shields Sarah just in time, but he gets shot at 2.21 p.m. The events from 30 years ago plays out, and at exactly 2.22 p.m., Jonas gets shot by the police who have followed Dylan there. Dylan falls in Sarah's arms and momentarily closes his eyes. He has visions of Jake and Evelyn being affectionate. Luckily, he does not die. Sarah then looks at the clock, it is 2.23 p.m., they manage to survive, and fate has changed. We finally get to know that in the past life too, the police officer Noah was the one who killed Evelyn and Jake, but the police had turned the story around to save their reputation. The dying star, Hamlin, mentioned at the start of the movie finally disappears but a new star is immediately reborn. In the ending scene, it is shown that Dylan and Sarah are living happily, with Dylan having finally overcome his fear of flying and is now a pilot, and Sarah smiling affectionately at their baby in the cradle.